What is going on, real lovers? It's your man, Jay Emanuel, back with a new episode. Today, I got one of my favorites, my girl, my homie, Asia. What's up, Asia? Hey there. I'm so excited for the topic. Yo, Asia, I'm so grateful to have you back on. Like, you have always been riding from the audio podcast, the live mm -hmm. show. Now I got you on a new series. Like, I I'm super excited to have you back on here. As you mentioned, we're going to be diving into a really great topic. We're going to look at, you know, who should you go to for dating advice? And it's all stemming from an email that I got from a real lover. I'm going to read that in a minute. Um, but are you excited to get into this topic today, Asia? I'm very excited. I feel like I've been holding my opinion and just overall <laughs> conversation for this moment. So I'm excited. So happy. Oh, yo. So let's get into it. Let me grab my phone right here and let me read it. So this one actually came in from a real lover by the name of Desiree. And here's what she says. She says, Jay, I've been asking my friends for advice on dating, but I don't think it's great advice. So I asked a few married couples at my church for some advice, but they said they can't really relate to the current dating scene. So I've been watching some videos on YouTube from, you know, dating experts, but many of their views on men, women and dating seem to be so extreme to me. I consider my values to be traditional and I want some advice on dating that isn't so toxic. Do you have any recommendations on or excuse me, do you do I have any recommendations that I could share on where to get balanced advice and wise counsel on dating and relationships? So that came in from Desiree. What's your take on that, Asia? <laughs> Absolutely. I think in the world full of YouTube, I think that everybody is a relationship expert, right? right. Everybody <laughs> has an answer to something. I think the biggest thing, number one, is being able to filter out like where it's coming from. And you can kind of like, when you start listening to something and it's a lot of like putting down one particular group, bashing the yeah. other group, it's a lot of opinions. It's a lot of like projection in a sense like they're speaking mm -hmm. from their own personal hurt red flag yeah. right not saying you mm -hmm. can't use your own experiences but you know when someone is talking about something like yo i've been through this i'm telling you what you need to do so you won't go through this versus i've been through this so everybody is like that right like those are <laughs> right <two different> <laughs> Of vibes. Those are two different types of conversations. So I would definitely start there by filtering it out. And mm -hmm. I think do your research on the person. Yeah. Me personally, the older I get, I like talking to people whose skin is in the game. So if yeah. I want marriage advice, I'm probably going to go to the married couples that are in my life that I see to have mm -hmm. a healthy relationship, not a perfect relationship. So you definitely can go talk to the ones that maybe was almost at the courthouse about to give up, right? But they <laughs> still together, right? Like right. that's good advice because what got you guys to that point and what brought you back together? So I want to talk to the people who are real honest and vulnerable mm -hmm. so definitely starting with the people that got the skin in the game for sure yes Not single people can't give advice because i'm single mm -hmm. right and i yeah. think that god <laughs> can bless us, right so god can bless <laughs> us with a level of wisdom to be able to share being able to give advice from Maybe not necessarily going through it, but seeing other mm. people go through certain things. And of course, just being led by the Holy Spirit. But to go back to my original point, I'm starting with the people that got the skin in the game. If you yeah. marry, I'm going to start there. If you're in a relationship, you guys are, you're courting, you're working towards something. I'm going to start mm. with them. Yeah. And I think that you make a really great point. And kind of going back to the email that Desiree sent in, I know that she was probably primarily focused on dating. And that may have probably been the reason why, like, that married couple was like, yo, like, we've been so far removed from, like, dating mm -hmm. that we don't really know how to tell you about that. But I think that she shouldn't write off the married couples. She should go to them, like you mentioned, for that advice on, you know, how to make a relationship last. More importantly, how to, you know, make a marriage last once you get there. Um, but, yeah, to your point, I think a good place to start when it comes to, like, dating in particular is look at couples who are courting or, or mm -hmm. who may not be married yet, but, you know, like, they're not that far removed from the dating scene. I think that would be a good place to start. Um, I'm assuming that there were probably people in her church that are not yet married but have been in a mm -hmm. fully committed relationship and, you know, they're not that far removed from the dating scene to be able to give some advice on how to navigate it. Absolutely. I want to add that also, mm -hmm. because that is a good point. Like if you're just at that dating point, not even at the relationship, I would seek advice from my friends or people that I'm close to who are dating the way I want to date. 
right? Not people that's Perfect. just outside. Because I know a lot of people that's outside, they kicking yeah. it. But if that's not my desire, that's not the way I want to walk in a courtship with anybody, then I'm going to ask my girls or my homeboys who have that like mind desire mm-hmm. as me. Like, okay, well, I am dating. I am seeing somebody. We are intentional. We set our boundaries. We say, hey, this is not happening. This is happening. I'm probably going to go to them first because what's the point of getting dating advice from somebody who is fine with dating 10 people at one time you know everybody has Man, to do that's it. a lot <laughs> right like <laughs> but it's people that's just like hey i date for fun i date for this i date for that whatever you date for is you know your mm-hmm. choice but i want to talk to somebody that is on the same page as me so that way mm-hmm. i know like okay you on the same page as me that mean you probably before the lord that mean we we kind of like yoked in that way right. so you can give me tips because it's working for you especially if they mm-hmm. are courting someone or if they you know i was dating this guy we decided to cut it short well how did you guys know to cut it short like you guys both had the same intentions where did it go wrong like let me know like you know so i would probably start there first no i think that what you're saying is is spot on i think that it kind of reminds me of a conversation that i had years ago on the podcast and you know i think it's still relevant today which is having relationship models or role models, you know, people that you look to and say, hey, like, that's the type of relationship that I want. And to your point, I think a principle that applies when it comes to dating specifically is looking at people who are getting the results you want dating, Mm -hmm. right? Like, those are the people that you should go and talk to to figure out, like, what did you do to, you know, you know, since there's a woman, what did you do to meet that guy? Like, where did you go? How are you behaving? You know, like you can kind of get the lowdown on that. Like, how did you navigate it? What type of things were y'all talking about on date number one, date number two? You know, were there any red flags? You know, you can start to ask that person some of the questions that you could then apply to your situation. And in addition to that, like you mentioned, somebody that is moving the way you want, maybe they're not in a relationship but the way they date is a way that you want to emulate, that you want to date as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the mass amount of information has caused a lot of confusion or just overcomplicated dating and courting in general? Yeah, I think when people don't know how to discern what information actually applies to them, Mm -hmm. that's where you run into issues. Like Because when people start making generalized statements, Mm -hmm. that's already a problem. But then when people listen to those generalized statements, and just to give an example, what I mean, when somebody be like, all men do this, or all modern women do that, right? Like those type of statements, they're blanket statements, they're general statements, they're not taking a specific individual or experience into into mind. Those are the statements that you got to be mindful of, not only just saying, but if you're listening to those statements, and you are then allowing them to be a belief that you accept. That to me is like the danger zone because it's bad enough to listen to people make these type of statements. But then when you start actually believing them, (laughs) like without without even going to see if that applies to the people that you're interacting with, you actually hinder your chance of having healthy, positive dating experiences. You know, as a man, if I walk into every date and I think, oh, every modern woman is thinks this way about first dates or splitting the bill or whatever the case may be. If I walk in with something that you hear people talking about and I immediately, um, you know, extrapolate that onto this woman and say, oh, she got to be she must be the same way. Mm-hmm. I already just killed the experience like it's no longer unique. I just made it just like everything else that everybody else is talking about. And the same applies with women. When you just yeah. accept the belief that you heard some woman or some man saying on Instagram or YouTube and now you go into a date and you just assume that this guy, <laughs> he not going to pay like he, he not going to pay. He not going to pull out my chair. He not going to be a gentleman because I heard men ain't gentlemen. Chivalry is dead. I heard men want to split the bill. So I'm ready to cuss him out. You ready to cuss him out before I right. get on a date? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so like that type of energy is what I think people have to be very mindful of. Absolutely. I feel like most people are going, and I'm not going to say most, but a lot of people are going into like dating with all of these checklists in their head. If he do this, he this type of man. If she do this, she that type of woman. It's like everyone is just walking on eggshells. I'm like, what is Mm -hmm. going on? Like everybody need to take a step back from all of this content because a lot of this stuff is not true. Like mm-hmm. you said, there are a lot of generalizations. So I think the, yeah. the the discernment and being able to filter, okay, what's coming from a good place? What's something that's mm-hmm. really just trying to help not just women, 
but both mm-hmm. men and women. I think that I pay attention to that too. I know that some channels are targeted to one specific audience, but I think that even right. if it is targeted to a specific audience, the way you talk about the audience that it may not be targeted to is very important too. Do you still talk about them in an uplifting way? If they, you know what I'm saying? Like, how is your conversation about them? And that's a way to filter as well. Definitely. Definitely. I think that, hold on, say that part again. I was going to say, because your audience can be men only, but you can still speak Mm -hmm. about women in a glorifying way, you know? Right. And and vice versa, you know, kind of the situation that I find myself in, you know, Mm -hmm. with Right to Real Love, where I primarily speak to a female audience, but I'm not on here bashing men. Like, Mm -hmm. like I, I, and I'm not an advocate for that. I will definitely, as y'all know, I will definitely call out, call out that questionable behavior. Like if we see something, but I'm very mindful not to say that is all men. Like usually it's a unique situation, but I, I will be fair, right? There are some things that do become a pattern within society. And instead of just accepting it as a belief, I think it's really important for people to be mindful of the fact that it's something to be aware of, right? Just just have it logged in the back of your mind so that if you get signs of it, you know how to deal with the situation. What you don't want to do is walk in with it in the forefront of your mind and you're making assumptions about the other person before you give them the opportunity to be themselves and really be present in that moment with them. Yeah. As you were talking, it's funny because mm. when I heard the question, I feel like I heard it in a different way. Like mm. you said, it, I thought that you were asking, like, who do people talk to when they're in a relationship? Like, who do mm. people, that particular person? So that was kind of like my yeah. answer in my head. Like, oh, okay, who the relationship, like, if I'm in a relationship, who do we talk to? Like, who yeah. do we go to when we're in that space? So mm-hmm. that's what I was kind of formulating in my head more so of that. That's why my answer was kind of, you know, off in the first in the first half. Nah, nah, your answer is actually spot on because I think who we seek advice for, whether it's dating or relationships, it all applies. I think, like she mentioned, she wants advice that's balanced and that is essentially wise counsel. And I think that you can find that for both dating and relationships. Like we mentioned, the sources may differ because you know, you're not necessarily gonna go to a married couple to get advice about dating. But you can definitely go to them to get advice about, you know, being in a relationship, being in a courtship and then definitely being in a marriage. And when it comes to like dating, I think the same principles apply, like whether people are online talking about dating or the things that you need to know about marriage or relationships is everybody isn't going to always be on point. Like I'll admit, you know, sometimes the stuff that I say, I look back and I listen or watch some of the stuff Mm -hmm. I say and like my perspective change. I'm like, yo, I don't know what I was thinking. Right? Right. So you have to take everything that people are saying with a grain of salt. And I think this is where biblical principles come into play, especially for, you know, women and men of faith is because when you make decisions and you make moves based on principles that we see in the Bible, like that stuff is going to stand up. Like when, when it talks about, you know, being mindful of the type of people that you're around, you know, um, bad character, corrupting, you know, a person's morals, like just principles like that, being unequally yoked, you know, people that have different values from you. All of that stuff applies regardless of whether it's dating or relationships. And it's very mindful for you to be able to identify is what this person giving me a fact, a principle, or is it a personal experience that is being led by their feelings. That that's usually one of the three that is going to be. Either somebody is giving you a fact about a very specific event, they're either going to give you a principle, something that is what I think you should prioritize when it comes to advice that you should actually apply and put into action in your life, or it's that third one, which is what we see a lot of, right? Which is somebody had an experience They felt some type of way. They got in their feelings. And now they're spewing out advice based on something that happened to them that they didn't, you know, like and that they felt some type of way about. And now you got people that's running and doing what they're telling you. But you don't even know that that ain't no principle. That's not even a fact. That's just somebody else's feelings about one event that happened to them. And now you're running with it. Yeah, I agree so much. One thing that I thought about when you were just talking, if it's me, if I'm dating someone, let's just say I got past the looking for somebody and now I'm Mm -hmm. dating. I want to get advice from someone who cares about both of us. 
And I think that that's something that I've just learned just within the most recent years. I think when it's somebody that knows both of you, or if it's someone that maybe they don't know the other person to the extent, but their level of care is there for the both of you, I think they always have the best advice because they're going to tell you when you're wrong and they're, they're going to be able to look at it from such an objective point of view. And their, mm -hmm. their, their overall goal is both of you guys and not just you because they care yeah. about you and him. And I think mm -hmm. that's important. So I, especially in a relationship, especially when the dating is getting kind of serious, my advice is shifting to who cares about both of us? Who wants to see right. both of us do well? That's who I need to get advice from. Because if mm -hmm. it's just your home girl and she don't got no ties to him, her advice mainly might just be in regards to you and not even mm -hmm. considering him. But you need to get advice from somebody that considers you both. Right. That is an excellent point. And it, it reminds me of what I've seen when I've watched some of these dating shows and, you know, whether it's the 90 day fiancés, the ready to loves, you know, you can kind of go mm -hmm. down a list. Yeah. Anytime that a person is being introduced to like family or friends, something that I have seen happen over and over again, and it ties directly to what you're saying is before they introduce their family or their friend to that person, they always load them up with information that skews their bias immediately. And that is something that I think we want to avoid doing. Like if you really care about somebody and they're about to meet your family member or your friends or somebody that you trust, like whether it's even a mentor or, you know, a spiritual mother or father or what have you, right? You don't want to give them some type of preface before they meet the person, like uh, really allow them to meet the person as a blank slate, because it's so easy to say, oh, I want you to give me some advice on this person. But let me tell you about all of the bad stuff they're doing, mm -hmm. all the shady stuff, all of the stuff that I quite now yeah. they're going to the glasses ain't rose color like they're coming in and now they're like, oh, I'm, I got to put this person under the microscope. I got to grill yeah. them instead of just getting to know that person. So. Absolutely. You make an excellent, excellent point. Like you want to make sure that the person you're seeking has both of your best interests in hand. And the point that I'm making, in addition to what you stated, is make sure you do your part by not giving that person information about them that will lead them to have a bias against that other person. Like mm -hmm. we have control over that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm curious, who do you personally go to when it comes to, you know, dating or relationship advice? I go to my older sis. That's definitely my my go to most times. Most times I'm going to go yeah. to her. <laughs> I have a best friend. I talk to her. But I have been blessed. And I've said this uh, quite a few times. I have. And this might be good or bad. I know I, almost <laughs> want to say, I have a lot of male friends. You know, mm -hmm. I have been blessed to have five plus. Right. Like just. Okay really, really good men in my life. And these relationships mm -hmm. aren't new. Some of them start as early as 14. So mm -hmm. guys that I've known, some married, some not, some in relationships, just very, very good men in my life. And that has just always, I feel like gave me a one up in a sense, because yeah. it was just, those are a lot of different personalities. So depending mm -hmm. on the type of guy it is, I can talk to one of my male friends that is similar in that. So I definitely go to them for male advice. If I'm looking to talk to somebody, okay, how should I do this? How should I do that? And they yeah. give good advice. Some of them, right? No shades mm -hmm. on, but some yeah. of them. <laughs> my sis, one of my best friends and definitely mm -hmm. my male friends is who I go to. And if I need like some wisdom, like if I'm mm -hmm. like, OK, I need some wisdom. I don't need nobody overcomplicating it because sometimes our generation is just overcomplicated. Right. Like it's just like right. no, you're not playing too many games. I'm not about to be on this. Oh, don't text him. Don't like I don't I don't move <laughs> like that. If I want to talk. Guess what we going to yeah. do? I'm going to hit you up. Like I'm not one of those. I just I just don't do well with it. I'm calling my mm -hmm. dad. Yeah. Because my dad is seasoned. My dad is, you know, he's an OG. My dad is married to my mom. I think they've been married like 33 mm. years. And he's wow. just, for me. My dad just keeps it simple. I'll never yeah. forget telling my dad I like somebody back when I was in college and it was a sticky situation. I'm like, dad, what should I do? He was like, mm -hmm. you gonna tell him, see what he say, move from there. Simple, right? Wow. Simple. <laughs> but you know, That's you real. This, they got six steps. Well, you wow. gotta do this, you gotta move this way, you gotta make, <laughs> daddy say, tell him, see what he say, move forward from there. And it's just so practical. So I think that yeah. those are my, and my mom too, but my dad gives, 
he gives great advice. I love my dad. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And what you're saying to me that really stands out is the fact that you're open and receptive to getting advice from men. And mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest, you know, like that's something and I don't mean to make a general statement. I'm speaking <laughs> on my own personal experience here. Right. Yeah. Like there have been many women that I've spoken to and that's really not the case. Like oftentimes it's just the opposite. Like a lot of the advice that they get comes from women. And I and I know that, you know, there's experts that have argued both ways. Like, you know, women shouldn't go to men for advice. Men shouldn't go to women for advice. Like once again, like I don't I don't personally subscribe to that. I, I truly live by the principle that I aim to be a wise person. And what I've learned is a wise person is somebody that is able to learn from any person, every person. And if you say, oh, well, I'm not going to accept any advice from you because you're the same gender as me. I feel like you're limiting yourself because it's really not that person's gender that qualifies or disqualifies whether or not they can give you sound or wise counsel. It's really where is that advice rooted in? Is it rooted in experience? Is it rooted in some type of biblical foundation? Like if it's coming from a good place, then I don't think their gender should usurp that fact. But that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> no, I agree with that 100%. And I also think that I do not take for granted that I've had very healthy experiences with the men in my life, right? So it mm -hmm. makes it safe for me to go and speak with them. And some women have not had that experience. So yeah. they do go to what they're more comfortable with. But I do find it though, especially when you're trying to communicate with the man, because mm -hmm. I do think that I am just a, a very outgoing person. I talk a lot, very strong and not, <laughs> not the strong that some people think, but just very right. strong, in my opinion. You know, I stand on what mm -hmm. I say. And I think that some Ten toes down, right? <laughs> yeah, ten toes down, right? Right. That's just me. But I yeah. also think that not intentionally, but sometimes mm. that can translate into a certain tone when I'm communicating mm. with somebody. Now, if mm. I'm talking to most of my homegirls, they're not going to pick up on it because they know right. Asia. It's been times where I'm talking to like, I can think of two of my male friends when I told them about a conversation I wanted to have. They both, mm. I told my female friends this, they didn't pick up on it. Told both mm. of my male friends, the first thing they said, Asia, you want to change your tone. If you want better mm -hmm. results, change your mm -hmm. tone. So that's yeah. the difference. My female friends, they understand my heart. They understand the emotion in it, right? They like, yeah. girl, I feel you. Like, you do need to mm -hmm. communicate that. But my male friends, well, Asia, I feel you. Mm -hmm. But that man going to shut down because of your tone. Like, yeah. not that you have to whisper or anything, but it's the tone. Can, you're, you're not going to get the results that you want. And me personally, I want results. So I took mm -hmm. heed to what they said. Like, watch the tone. Don't try to get everything out at one time. Like you got a lot. Like you, yeah. the, the conversation don't <laughs> be shut down after two minutes. That's what two right. people told me, two completely different men. So I took mm -hmm. their advice and I got the best results. My yeah. female friends, or my female friend I talked to it about, I think that I could have got okay results with her. It's not that she told me anything wrong, but she mm -hmm. was more on the emotional side, just feeling mm -hmm. her sister, like, right? Yeah, but yeah. if you talk to an older woman, I talked to my mm -hmm. older sister about it, who's in her 40s. She was able to say, Asia, that tone. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. it's maturity, it's wisdom, and it's also just men kind of, I hate to say this, but some men are kind of universal. Like men mm -hmm. kind of all want the same thing from their their woman, their friend. And mm -hmm. it is a level of respect, right? right. Like they want to feel right. respected even in conversation. Just like mm -hmm. women, I want to feel heard. Yes. Right? Like it's not it's not right. really the respect thing because I feel like mm -hmm. that's kind of a given. Like I don't really have yeah. to, you know, I don't feel disrespected, but I need to feel heard. Because mm -hmm. if I don't feel heard, now I'm yeah. feeling the way. So I think right. the man has to go the extra mile to make sure that he's listening. Like, okay, you said this, let me respond to this. And the mm -hmm. woman has to go the extra mile to make sure that you're being respectful even in your approach. That was a little long, but yeah. Kind of nah, everything that you just said is, is spot on. I'm in complete agreement with that. And what what it kind of reminds me of is something that we, I think we all have to be mindful of, but especially if you know yourself, like like you mentioned, if if you have the tendency to have a certain tone or you know your energy may be considered what people would say yeah. as a woman, masculine, right? <laughs> like you have to know yourself. I think yeah. I think that's that's key with any person. But this is the main point that I want to make, which is if you find yourself being defensive, whether it's with the person that's providing you with advice or insight, or it's the person that you're actually dating or in a relationship with and interacting, mm -hmm. you should always stop and ask, like, why am I so defensive? Mm 
Mm-hmm. Like sometimes people don't even recognize that that defensiveness is like their default mode. And sometimes yeah. you don't even have to, you're not at risk, you know, like you're not under attack. And I think when a person can become aware enough to say, hold on, like, why am I in this dis- defensive posture? <laughs> like this person is just talk. they're answering a question that I asked them. Like, mm-hmm. like why, why am I defensive yeah. about what I just asked them to share with me? Right. So I just say that because I think it's important to, to know that being aware of ourselves is just as important because that is also going to determine who you go to for advice. Because let's say, for example, you are in this case, a woman who is more sensitive, right? Like you don't really like a man to kind of give you like that direct hard truth, you know, like you prefer things to be handled a little bit more delicately, right? Well, you're not going to go to the dude that is going to just be like, yo, well, you got to do this or you should do that. Because it's not that his advice is bad. It's just it's not going to be delivered in a way where you're going to be most receptive to it. And I think that is huge. You have to be able to discern what type of people are you receptive to receiving advice from. Those are the people that you need to then seek out who have wise counsel and go to them. Because if you're defensive because you don't like the way that that person is presenting the advice, somebody may be giving you exactly what you need to hear, but you're unable to receive it. Yeah. And I think that comes with just like maturity, right? Like Mm -hmm. how bad do you want to be better and how bad do you want to grow? Because the more you want to be better, the more you want to grow. Sometimes you just got to sit in the fire and listen to it because everything Mm -hmm. ain't going to come, you know, with a box with a bow on it. And honestly, I think the things that you really need to grow in, they never come like that. So, yeah. yeah, why are people getting so defensive or why are people always offended by certain mm-hmm. things too. I just think that's our culture. Yeah. Everything it. You got to walk mm-hmm. on eggshells with everything. Like everybody mm-hmm. is just premeditated offense, right? But that's mm-hmm. a whole other topic for another day. Right. <laughs> people <laughs> wake up in the morning with premeditated offense and they heart on their way to work, right? Mm-hmm. Like you just have premeditated offense just sitting in you. So nobody can yeah. say anything. If they say one thing, you're just going off. So right. but that's another topic for another day. That's another topic. Yeah, yo, yo, you hitting you hitting on something that definitely needs to be talked about because yeah. you're so right. And that's one of the things that I, I sit back and I, I be contemplating and I'm like, man, we live in a society where people are like so easily offended it, it is like crazy man like i mean it could be the simplest stuff to your point like you could walk up to a person and be like yo have a great day what you mean have a great day oh, what you mean have a great i don't day? know what did i mean i thought i was saying something nice <laughs> yeah what you know that i don't know about my day right like it's just right. like okay people are walking around like this but again like that is the and people are going into that with dating too so imagine yeah. going into dating with premeditated offense already in your heart. So this person had no chance. And it's not that they didn't have a chance because they weren't good. They had no chance because you had so much offense in your heart already. Right, right. Wow. Yo, Asia, you, as always, drop so (laughs) many gems. Before we go, do you have any last words of advice or closing words that you want to leave Desiree or any of the other real lovers with? Yeah, I want to say that I think that wanting to date and her even just seeking out advice is just it shows where her heart is in. Right. Like it shows where you're at and how you desire to have a healthy dating life. So don't feel bad for that. Don't feel bad for wanting to date. Wanting to date is a beautiful thing, especially when you want to do it the right way, especially when you want to do it God's way. So definitely stay encouraged. I hope that it's some good people around you. I hope that you meet some young men and some young women that are on the same page as you that can encourage you and that can be on that journey with you and it can be fun and it can be exciting and not something where you just feel like oh here I go but no like oh here I go like I'm about to meet somebody like I just pray that you just have that joy and that excitement on your journey oh man I love it yo Asia thank you so much for coming on and just dropping so many gems on us if they want to get in contact with you show you some love and support how can they do that Absolutely. You can follow me on Instagram, Asia Say What with two T's. It's right there. You can shoot me a DM. I'm going to respond. And ladies, if you're looking for a women's ministry, girls room ministry with two Y's, again, you could DM that page and I will respond. Perfect. Well, thank you again for coming on, being your amazing self as always. And I can't wait to have you come back on in the future. Thank you so much, Asia, for everything you share with us today. I truly appreciate you. My pleasure.